Nagraj Manjude's 2016 Marathi film Sairat uses a basic design principle with great effect. Contrast. It spans both across the narrative and within its smaller sections. The film is designed in two halves. The first half is a meta narrative, a teenage romantic love presented in the form of Bollywood romance synonymous to the style of Yashraj and Karan Johar films. The sweeping camera moves and the high speed shot references to Raj and Simran. This self-referentiality is a key element to lure audience into a sense of safety. The style may be new for the Marathi cinema, but it is familiar to the Marathi audience through Bollywood. When the plot takes a turn, so does its formal language. The over-stylized slow-motion shots give way to gritty handheld camera moves. The seamlessly blended match cuts are now overpowered by harsh razor-sharp cuts. The first half has four songs, the second none. By contrasting the two halves through his formal language, Manjure accentuates the contrast between our expectation and familiarity with the empty Bollywood narrative and the unfortunate harsh reality of generational caste violence. This is all happening on a macro scale. On an intimate scale of the film, Manjure subverts the genre through character design and interpersonal relationships. The lead pair here follows the Shakespearean convention of a tragic love story. However, the director adds his own twist to that convention. The girl here has more agency than the boy. Even though the boy belongs to the lower caste, which is congruent to the convention, he's the one here with fairer complexion, something that is conventionally associated with upper caste people. The gender subversion happens through girl being more robust in her display of affection than the boy. I love you. By subverting these conventions, the film manages to traverse through postmodernistic narrative. While the characters are communicating among themselves within the film, the film itself is critiquing the development of romantic films through the years. If the two halves contrast to each other in terms of form, the individual halves display contrast through character arcs. In the second half of the film, a lot of time is devoted to the audios the couple has to go through. We see them fight. Sujay asks less about the levai ta gala mala. Ay avda vait ga mi? Doubt over their decisions. Tujya sathi garcha na sudun ali. Pachcha ta pay lagle mala. Then restore faith in each other. It is only when their life gets on track, we are reminded of their parents' life being derailed in their absence. Now if you change the position of these two small scenes the narrative will still make sense what will be lost is the emotional heft which is created not by the individual scenes but with their collection together they form contrasting character arcs where one couple wins over their parents to form a family whereas back home one family descends into obscurity and the other is pushed on the verge of getting ostracized <laughs> I have already mentioned the contrast created through character design in the first half. However, the principle is further explored in the first half through songs. A song which always has the ability to exist and flourish independently forms a smaller coherent unit of any film. Good film songs inherit the basic design principle of the film. In the songs of Sairat, the theme of contrast is explored through musical arrangement, use of instruments, and the complementing visuals. The first song of the film is like any regular film song. a musical introduction followed by the first verse leading into an interlude followed by the second verse a bridge and the final verse all the sections of the song except for the bridge are scored with western instruments persha's nervousness and excitement are explored through an interplay of different string instruments while all this is happening the visuals harken back to the bollywood imagery of leads running in the fields and it also establishes the motif of birds Jump cuts are used like skipping hard beats out of excitement. Ajay Atul further accentuates that excitement musically. For this important character moment, they take out the western instruments and introduces the quintessential heart-pounding Maharashtrian beats with dhol and lejha. This musical contrast created simply by way of moving from western to maharashtrian instruments is what keeps the character and the story grounded to its roots. But this is the story of Parsha and Archie and this is the first time in the film that they meet each other which automatically makes it an ideal moment for the composers to introduce the main theme of the film. However, the song is from Parsha's point of view. So as he gets closer to Archie, the theme gradually swells up and reaches a crescendo reflecting the euphoria of being so close to the girl of his affection. The 
rest of the song then follows the pattern of the previous verse except for the end where the female vocals are added to announce the arrival of the female lead to kick off the romantic narrative this is a well designed song both musically and visually the song has a multi dimensional quality to it because of the cultural contrast created through a rich musical landscape This pattern is repeated in the second song of the film which is from Archie's point of view. Although the entire song is scored with western instruments, most of it except for the bridge is scored using familiar guitar and drums. The bridge section which is her subjective moment is scored using western symphonic instruments. Just like Persia in the previous song, jump cuts are used again like skipping heartbeats which is followed by one of the best moments in the history of Indian cinema. Archie takes the commanding position in the relationship by doing something that we have hardly seen an Indian female lead do in a romantic film. Google at the hero. This shot is particularly important to convey that power shift. Manjure could have easily kept the focus on Archie. Instead, he starts the shot with Persha in focus. Then he racks the focus to Archie, clearly stating that unlike a regular Bollywood romantic film, the command has now moved from the male to the female lead. That's cinema. Storytelling through the camera. not through dumbed down dialogues by the time the title track arrives they both have expressed their affection for each other so the western and the indian instruments now occupy equal sonic space the interludes are scored with western symphonic instruments while the vocals are scored with maharashtrian instruments again a clever method to keep the character grounded in their roots and this is just a typical party song which in an ironically fitting way is the most successful and popular song of the film despite having the most conventional arrangement among the four songs however The reason for its massive success across the languages is the sonic quality of the lyrics. Most part of Jhingat is only driven by the drums. The sound of the vocals is the only sound we hear during the verses. The Heartland Marathi accent has some heavy sounding consonants which doubles as bass sounds, whereas the sharp vowels compensate for the high pitched sounds. Ajay Atul used this characteristic of Marathi accent not just as vocals but as a musical instrument. This is the same concept AR Rahman implemented with his use of Tamil lyrics in a Hindi song. He was more interested in the sound of those vocals that complement the sonic landscape of the song. So even if you don't understand the lyrics, you can enjoy the sound of the vocals and ultimately the entire song. I think that's quite genius. When Sairad Ghan had a massive critical and box office success, numerous praises were showered on his makers. Actors and the director appeared on the news shows, talk shows and comedy shows. How natural the film looks and how raw the film feels were the most common remarks. Those two are among the primary reasons for so many people to fall in love with this film. The simplicity, the natural look and the raw feel were created on the foundation of a basic design principle. It worked as a spine around which Manjure could weave this familiar tale of love with his own twists and turns. However, such is the complexity of filmmaking that explaining what it takes to create such a film is never put forth. Instead, the end result is summed up in abstract phrases. This efficiency of language ironically robs the filmmaker. It implies as if what Manjure created was nothing short of catching a lightning in a bottle. And that's a great disservice to him. Because when a director captures the imagination of a huge amount of population, it doesn't happen by accident. It happens by design. <laughs>